So in the last video, we talked about logistic regression, uh, where we trained a model to predict whether someone would be admitted uh, to a university based on their two entrance exam scores. And as you can see, um, even with a well-trained model, if it's linear, you're always going to miss. You're always going to miss some, right? There's no way to include these with a linear model. Um, but there is actually an even more pathological case. Uh, so this here, I think the, we got a success rate of about oh, over 90% at least, right? But there are other cases uh, where the, the dependence of the x values on the y predicted are, are simply more complicated than, than two exam scores. So here is, um, if you wanted to distill it down to a very simple example, right? Here is probably the most pathological case. Right, so we have two points here with a zero and two points here with a one. And of course, it's completely impossible to separate the zeros and the ones here with a single line, right? That is just uh, completely impossible. And so that is a very good example of the need for a more complex model, which is actually the neural net. Uh, so in order to sort of motivate the neural net, let's, let's look at the uh, logistic regression model that we built. Okay, so, and we're gonna introduce a lot of new uh, terminology. So, but the, the model, right, it basically takes uh, two x values and the bias, and then it uh, multiplies these x values and biases by a weight that gives us uh, an and adds everything up, that gives us a number, that's the x hidden, uh, that we then feed into our activation function. Okay, so that's what this is supposed to signify. And our activation function that gives us a value between uh, zero and one. Okay, and we can, uh, the weights here and the x values uh, can be used to draw a decision line, which is necessarily a straight line, uh, given these, uh, yeah, given the, how the model is set up. So clearly um, what you need in order to separate the zeros and the ones here is at least two lines, right? So what that means, so if you have two lines, and the slide is gonna be very busy now, but just bear with me, right? If you want, if so if we have two lines, Right? Then we can have a region here with ones and two regions uh, with zeros. Uh, sorry, these are zeros and these are ones. So if you want two lines, right, then we need two sets of weights. Right? So basically what I've done on going from here to here is I've added another node here. Right? So this node here now has its own set of weights, which is which are, I call it red here, and with these red uh, weights, I can draw a second line. Okay, and so now we need another layer here in order to distill the output from this hidden layer now uh, into an output that is between zero and one. Right, because right now here, we have two outputs and we want one output. So we have to combine them with a new set of weights here and a bias to give us one output, which is the predicted value. Okay, since this is our output, this is our input, right? Then this is actually hidden in our model. And so that's called the hidden layer. Okay, and so we now have three sets of weights really. So we have weights connecting the input, which is i, and the hidden, which is h, right? And so we have two sets of those, this one, the red one, and the black one. And then we have another set of weights that connects the hidden layer and the output layer, which gives us the prediction. Okay, so let's, let's see how this actually works in a little more detail. Well, before I should do, I should, so this is a neural net. You're now actually looking at a neural net. So it's basically a logistic model where we've added, uh, we've combined two different logistic models. So, so how does this work, right? So in our logistic model, right, we have two inputs and a bias that gets multiplied together and summed, 
and put it through our activation function. Okay, so what we have, what we're doing here now, right, is we have um, two sets of weights. So k here can be the one or two, whether you're going to this node, basically, or to this node, right? This is node one in the hidden layer. This is node two in the hidden layer. Okay, so we have two x values that are now between the input and the hidden layer. That goes into an activation function, right? These two activation functions. And so now that gives us an output, which I'll call y hidden, right? There'll be two outputs here and here. We combine those outputs with a bias, right? to give us another x value that connects the hidden and the output, and that goes into our final activation function to give us y predicted. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start by coding that up. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, with my logistic regression model that I implemented earlier. I think I forgot to rename it in the video, but I renamed it now. I'm gonna make a copy and start it up. And this time, um, the first thing I'm going to do is rename it. And so I'm going to call it NN for neural network. And actually the particular uh, thing we're looking at here is a famous problem called the exclusive OR problem. That's not really um, important, but it helps me uh, remember where it is. Okay, so Let's see what we need to keep here. So we, we don't need this uh, because we only have four points and we're gonna type this in. We probably need all of that, so let's run it. And uh, let's get our data. So I'm gonna do it a little bit like I did the uh, linear regression. So we have some our x and y list. And so our first point is 0, 0, and that's gonna, that's part of the zeros. Then we have our 0, 1, and that's part of our 1s. And then we have our 1, 0, that's part of our 1s also. And then finally we have a point at 1, 1, and that's part of our zeros. Okay, now I'm gonna get this into a data frame using pandas. Uh, so I'm gonna read it in from x and y, and my columns are So the first one I'm going to call x1, the second one I'm going to call x2, and the last one whoops, is my y value. So if you're a little confused, well, so let's, let's look at and see how this looks. Okay, so point, point zero zero is part of the zero group. 0 0.01 is part of the one group, 1, 0 is part of the one group, and 1, 1 is part of the zero group. Okay, but let's, let's actually plot it. I think it'll probably make more sense when you see that. So uh, we can, do a scatter plot here, uh, where this is my x1s. This is my x2s, and these are my y's. And let's see what we get. Yes, so at 0, 0, I have a 0, one of my 0 points. And at 1, 1, I have one of my 0 points. And so at 1, 0, I have one of my 1 points. And at 0, 1, I have one of my 1 points. OK, great. So, 
Um, let's see. So this is my x1. And this is my x2. So that's my x set. Now they're already between 0 and 1. Uh, so I don't have to divide. Um, yes, I still have to add my bias. And my y is, I just called y. Uh, let's leave that out for now. And so I still have the, I need two weights for my x1 and x2, and then a third weight for the bias. So that's the way, that's the way it should be. And I'm going to debug. So I'm going to start with an epoch of 1. And let's set the learning rate down just to yeah, see where we're at. OK. So OK. Actually, yeah, this is a little more complicated now because uh, I need two sets of weights, right? So I need my input hidden and actually that's no longer a vector of three, right? That is a matrix that has two columns and three rows. So let's, I'm going to hit option here and comment this out. So I can take this thing one at a time. So let's just print out WIH, right? So here is my first set of weights. Uh, and here is my second set of weights. Right? I need two because I have two nodes in the hidden layer. Okay, but I also need weights between the hidden layer and the output. And so I have, so there I only have one set. Okay, so because, yes, I only have one set here. So let's just print that out. Yes, let's just go back and look at the picture. Right, so my input hidden, right, I have two sets of three, and my hidden output, I have one set of three weights. Excellent. Okay, so now let's go, this should be okay, this should be okay. And now, instead of x hidden, right, I call this now my so this is x input hidden. Um, and so that should still be okay because this is this has changed to a matrix now, but I'm using a matrix multiply. Okay. Um, but I don't go directly to y predicted anymore. I go to y hidden. So that gets x i the hidden the x values for the input hidden and actually you know this is going to start to be a little complicated so I'm going to make this a little bit prettier uh, by using functions so functions is something uh, new so I can so let me just do a little simple example so I can define a function that takes some arguments, we call it. Um, so I have to define what I call my function. So let's just call it func for short. And that takes some arguments. Uh, and then it does something. It computes something, for example. So uh, let's call this y. Uh, that's probably a bad choice. Let's call this A, let's call this B, and A is just B squared. And then I return it. A. 
So then I can say, well, what if I want to square 4? Right, I get 16. So, or I can do it this way. I can get 16 if I want to get 6. I can get 36 and so forth. And so, uh, let's do that with activation. So let's call this activation. Um, and that takes some x value. That's my activation function. And then I return it like this. Okay, so now I can rewrite this a little bit prettier. So I can now call this activation. And the minus sign is taken care of inside here. And notice uh, what I call it here does not need to match what I call it here. Uh, it can just be, it just renames it. Okay, so that is my activation, so that is my y hidden. Okay, so my y hidden now, uh, let's, let's look at it. Hopefully this works. So w is not defined, that's right. I need the w input hidden. And activation is not defined because I didn't run this after I changed the name. Okay, so yes, I have four data points and for each of these I have um, a y hidden from the first node and the second node. So let's go back and look. So I have an output from each data point for this node and one for this node, right? But now I need to add the bias, right? So I need a one, just like I did with my x values, right? So here I added a one up here. So now for the y hidden, I also need to add a one here. Okay, but now I have a matrix here. So I'm going to use a different command in order to do this. So that is called concatenate. So do that. I want to add the ones to my YH. And if I remember right, I need a second. Uh, thing here. Yes. Okay, I get an error. Let's see what the problem is. So let's print. Well, if there's a problem, it's usually with the shape. So ah, okay. Yes, so the, the problem is that the y, if that's a matrix, of course, right? Because it has, for every data point, it has two, right? And I'm trying to add a, a vector. Okay, so I have to make my ones array vector, a uh, matrix, sorry. And that, so that also means that I have to, I can't use this anymore. So I have to use the same thing uh, in order to put in my ones because the ones is now a matrix. So I want to put in the ones here to X. Uh, let's see how this, uh, 
Uh, that didn't work. Oh, for one thing, I think it needs to be like this. Yes, so it's the dimension problem again. Um, yes, so let's see. So I want to look at the shape of this and the shape of ones. Oh, yeah, I have to print it out after the, or before the, before it goes wrong. So I have to look at X. Ah, okay, so I need to, yeah, obviously these need to be the, the same dimensions. So I need to flip, I can flip this one so it's two, four. So this one being the one, so I flip that, let's see how that works. Ah, okay, so I need to, because I'm trying to put it in as columns, I need to put it in as rows. Okay, let's see. If that works, yes, okay. So here's my zero, zero with a bias, zero, one with a bias, and so forth. Yes, okay, so that works now. Uh, so I don't need to print this out. I don't need to print this out. And I still get an error message. Ah, okay, because I'm missing the second parentheses. Okay, good. Um, I should probably remove some of this. No, so that's fine, so I don't need that. And you can see now, this is my hidden Y. So I have four data points. The first, and I have a, a vector here that's three long, and the first one is a one, exactly how it should be. Okay, good. Mm. But before I can make a y predicted, I need to make my x values. So I need to multiply my um, weights for the hidden output, connecting the hidden and the output, times uh, yh. Yes, let, let's just double check if that's correct. Right, so I have my, I get my y here. I add a one to include the bias, then I multiply WHO by Y hidden, and then I need to put it into my activation function. Okay, so I'm on good track. So my Y predicted is now the activation function of XO. And that means I should, should now I should be able to do an, uh, calculate an error and an L2 loss. So let's just try to print out the L2 loss. Um, ah, these are matrices. And so that is probably, so I have a problem with the error line, that's probably something to do with the shape. So let's see what the shapes are. Yep. Yeah, so one is a vector and one is a matrix. Uh, what is a vector? That is the Y, so I need to make Y. Ah, okay, so I need this back in. Okay, and I get a loss function. 